I guess I just have precocious children, you know? If they- if our children can't draw a triangle when they're three, I'm going to, uh... Hey guys, there's no official intro to this video because it was supposed to be combined with another video, but it ended up being like two hours long, so that's why I made it its own. Basically, I am having Kevin take NCLEX questions while I take step one questions, and so we're exchanging nurse doctor exams. We just thought it'd be a fun experience, and yeah, we each actually both did 10 questions, but because of footage, it ended up being like two hours long. We had to just cut out the bits and pieces that were exciting for you guys. So I hope you enjoy it. and don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up. Okay, so we're gonna do like a mukbang style stressful exam taking session. How many questions should we do? Like 10 each? 10 each? You don't have to show all of them. <laughs> We're gonna probably each do 10 questions. I'm gonna do 10 step one questions. And if you don't know what step one is, it is the USMLE step one and you take it in either after second year or third year in med school. And it's a really important test that basically- Step one is traditionally the exam that um, basically- Basically your score on step determines how competitive of a specialty you can match into, but things are changing now because step one is now pass fail. It's a very stressful exam that you guys have dedicated study time for, right? Yes, we have, it's probably the most time you'll ever have to study for a test. You get about eight weeks or about maybe two to three months. And people go ham on this exam. Like you, you need to, to score well. Everything basically. Mickey's gonna. I'm gonna this ace this color. with flying colors. We're just gonna cut out the parts or, where. Or, or black and white, you know, those colors. But yeah, we're actually using the Board Vitals question banks, and so Board Vitals, if you didn't already know, offers test prep for nurses, for doctors, and for other healthcare professionals like dentists, pharmacists. They have excellent question banks as well as rationales, and we're going to just jump into these questions and show you what some of them look like. I haven't even started this exam, and I'm like already sweating because I already know I'm not going to do well. Here. I feel like NCLEX questions aren't that hard if you study. <laughs> I would very, I would assume that you would be able to They're very basic right. science though, the step one questions. It's not very clinical. Okay, I guess we're starting with my segment. So we are enjoying mm -mm -mm. We are enjoying um, some poke and some avocado as well as some bok choy and of course rice cuz Can we get sponsored by like Nishiki rice? Ah! Yeah, so anyways, we're doing the USMLE Step 1 exam. 50-year-old man presents with fever, stiff neck, and decreased arousal. Lab studies reveal a prolonged PTT, elevated D-dimer, low fibrinogen, and low platelet count. CSF cultures are most likely to be positive for which of the following? Are you kidding me? Do you even know the answer to this? <laughs> this sounds like a Step 2 okay, question. Okay, it's definitely not the flu. So process of elimination um, is key for all these exams. So let's go through and see which ones we know. Oh, he has a stiff neck though. PTT. Low fibrinogen, low platelet. At this point, I don't know. So I'm gonna have to take a leap of faith and guess, do you know? I'm gonna write it down. It's A to, I think it's A, B or C. I just don't know which one. I'm gonna write my answer on this, okay? I'm gonna go with the... Uh... You might be right. <laughs> I honestly don't know. Okay. Oh, I got it wrong. Whoa! I got it what wrong. What did you guess? I guess B. Process of elimination definitely works. I had obviously no idea what the correct answer was, but I did end up guessing it correctly. So, however, the most important thing about getting your board scores higher is remediation on both the questions you get right and the questions you get wrong. People often forget to remediate on the ones you get right because like 90% of the time, you actually don't know why you got the question right, plus you need to know why all the other options are wrong. So let's actually go into the show explanation section. Neisseria meningitis is the cause of bacterial meningitis in approximately 15% of patients and features a petechial rash, DIC. Oh yeah, DIC is more common with, I guess, Neisseria. But okay. staph is the most common cause of bacterial meningitis in adults that I 15 to 60. That's why I, I thought it was B. Exactly. I'm sweaty. I think I might have to change into something. You got it right. I, know, I got it wrong. I'm like sweating. You got to put on your test taking attire. Yes. You're doing better than I am already. You're counseling a pregnant 25 year old woman who has two cats and two dogs in her home. You ask her to put someone in charge of the cat's litter box. This is in order to prevent infection in what organism? I should really know this. Oh. Um. 
You don't want the poop. Okay. You, I'm it's not... me. Okay. <laughs> You're stressing me out. I don't know if I should say anything. I should just let you take it, right? I don't know. Isn't it pee? Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's pee. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Great. We got that right. I remember learning that in nursing school at one point or another. I guess it's like somewhere in my brain. I'm just yeah. like, I just don't remember that I know it. Then, but So 99% of exam takers got this question correct. So uh -oh. Good job. Okay. Patient presents to the ED with toxic ingestion. A physician in the ED disagrees with the primary emergency physician's treatment plan, which of the following is the most appropriate next step. Wait, I'm really good at these things. So the first step is to talk about it with the person involved, and then the next step is to escalate up the chain of command. So we're going through the different answer choices, contact risk management, that it should not be the next step because you haven't talked about it with the people involved. Contact department chair, I don't think that's right. Discuss the case with the ED physician, including basis, yeah, so that sounds like you are talking to the person directly involved with you, so that sounds correct. But you don't want to stop there, you want to read through all the answer choices and make sure that there isn't one that is actually better. Um, because with these questions, it's always what what answer choice is the most correct, right? Yes. There could be one or that is- Or the least wrong, right? Exactly. So my answer choice is C, and I feel very confident that that is the correct answer because you are talking about it with the person involved. Oh great, another maternity question. These are my favorite. Fun fact, maternity was my worst section on the NCLEX. I think everyone knows that by now. A 42 year old G2P1. So the G stands for the number of pregnancies that they've had. Like she has a G2P1 is she's been pregnant twice and she's had one like term like, birth or some, like one kid that I thought it up. was the past 20 weeks. How many babies have made it past Like a past weeks? abortion, you have a whatever in labor, like the I don't know if 20 weeks is the right one, but it's like however many babies she's had come out. Reaching viable gestation. That's what I said! Yeah, but like when you don't write the A and the other stuff, it doesn't count. And the age cutoff is 20 weeks. Like 24, no? I think for the purposes of GTPAL, I'm okay. pretty sure it's 20 weeks. Mm -hmm. Don't quote me on that. The rationale will tell us what the cutoff is. I don't think that's um, important for this question. Okay, whatever. Reporting no fetal movement for the last six hours, that's horrible. On evaluation, the heart rate is 110. So normal fetal heart rate is 120 to 160 or 110 to 160. 150 to 180? Uh, no. One... Yeah, see, 110 to 160. Really? Yep. Non-stress test is performed and is non-reactive. That's not great. That's... One of the following statements is correct concerning the non-stress test. Um, going through each one, a fetal heart rate of 110 is abnormal. No, it is still normal, although it is on the very low end of normal, so that's untrue. B, the fetal heart rate acceleration results from dopaminer dop dopaminergic stimulation. Um, I don't think that's relevant. Fetal hypoxemia caused by uteral placental insufficiency usually leads to late D cells. Ooh. Uh, honestly, I don't remember. Could could be. Fetal hypoxemia caused by, I don't know which kind of D-cell it causes, but I know it causes a D-cell. So potentially, C could be right. Fetal head compression results in reflexive slowing of the heart rate. A late D-cell. <laughs> I literally debated that for so long. So I picked D, but it was C. I genuinely don't remember the like which D cells are which, so that's something that I need to review, and that's why we have specialties and people are good at the jobs that they do because this is clearly not my expertise. Wait. Fetal hypoxemia caused by uteral placental insufficiency usually leads to late D cell. 56 year old dialysis dependent female with CKD presents to ED complaining of heart palps. Um, her ECG shows peaked T waves, which is the following electrolyte abnormalities is most likely responsible for her symptoms. It is hyper. Yeah. There we go. Okay. Great work. So peak T waves are caused by hyperkalemia and hypokalemia is characterized by U waves. So the NCLEX is actually a computer adaptive exam, which means that based on how you're scoring, it changes the level of difficulty of the questions. Oh, which, oh my gosh. Which of the following actions by the nurse is the most effective means of preventing spread of nosocomial infections? <laughs> use of an impermeable count, use of gloves for client contact, cohorting clients infected with the... I feel like it's just D, like... Yay! Oh, where is it? Oh, it's screen up there. A nurse is providing care instructions to a patient of an infant with... Clubfoot. 
which of the which it, who is having the cast which of the following instructions should the nurse provide concerning exercise of the affected foot exercise with each diaper change exercise once a day in the morning what is this for real after each nap, exercise every four hours. I feel like this one's the most specific, but like, cause I don't know how many times someone goes to the diaper change. Is there like a clinical reason why you should exercise after each nap? Club foot. I love how you looked at that and said club foot. I don't know, telepesis equal navaris. I mean, it's just your legs are like this. Varus, like air, you have like air between your leg and valgus is like the other way around. There's no air in between your legs. This is gonna take us centuries Oh to my god, I'm gonna get this wrong. Just pick an answer choice. Oh my god, pick this one. Fudge. That's definitely wrong. For each diaper the, change, yeah. yeah, okay. Should be done often and makes it easier to incorporate into our routine. Hmm. One is low. Cluster care. Yes. Should be done more than once a day, should be done more than twice a day. Every four hours, but it's harder to remember, okay. I was thinking, okay, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm suck at test taking. Nurse is assessing a three year old child's developmental progress, which kind of indicates a developmental delay. Oh my god. You three can year do old. It. He can draw triangles. That's too much. Oh, triangles. That's... What? You have to read all the answer choices. You can't just see something and click it. I was so certain. The triangles. Three sides, three year old, four sides. You can draw a square four year old, circle five year old. Oh, uh, this is definitely D. I'm so, this is not how you're supposed to. See, so he didn't read all the answer choices and. The D is like, you should be definitely be able to, right? Yeah, would you like to try it? Yeah, I'm dumb. Yeah. See, so you need to read all the answer choices. You can't just skip around like that. I guess I just have precocious children, you know? If they, if our children can't, Draw a triangle when they're three. I'm going to uh, send them to boarding school. <laughs> I'm gonna make them draw triangles every day for the rest of their life. The nurse is providing hygiene and grooming to each client with schizophrenia. Which of the following is true about this condition? Environmental factors, increase in dopamine, there are extra parameters. In I want like the hard NCLEX questions. Why is he getting the easy one? It's definitely not A. There are extra. This is a okay. Yay, great work. But like, that was the only one that's like basic science-y, you know? The nurse is assessing a postpartum client who delivered a baby three days ago. So it's the mom. Mm -hmm. Assessing the low, okay. Yeah. <laughs> serum is probably... <laughs> serum, serum, serum. <laughs> serum. <laughs> why do I feel like I've heard the elbow before? <laughs> Jessica Alba. <laughs> it's gonna be this, I'm gonna cry. No, okay. <laughs> it makes you think about it too much, you yes. know? What is Lokia Alba? Is a white or yellow discharge? Yeah, it's a real thing. <laughs> Why are we getting all these maternity questions? Can we get like a, some anatomy questions or... Oh my oh, god, Oh, there you inside. go, there you go. This is the kind of question I was looking for. <laughs> what do you mean? A nurse is caring for a client with type 1 diabetes. Has MPH insulin and regular insulin. Oh, this is the order set. Okay. I wonder if you can figure this one out. I mean, I'm the one who had, like, was supposed to write this order, right? Sir, <laughs> this, uh, MPH. Wait, regular insulin? I'm not gonna help you. You gotta figure this one out. You gotta guess. Is it A or D? Do you give the... I feel like you just take both, right? No? Is it the A? Try it. What? Mm -mm. You have to put them in the same syringe? <laughs> yeah, so you actually put them in the same syringe, but it needs to be done in a very specific order. So read the rationale. So the regular insulin is drawn from a multi-use. It has to be drawn up first to avoid contamination. Okay, so you give the reg the fast acting first. Okay. So there should be a diagram. To get the regular insulin first. So the around. regular is clear and the NPH is cloudy, so it's always okay. clear to cloudy. So rapid. Just popping in, I'm sure you guys are super curious how many we each got right. So I calculated and it looks like I got 7 out of the 10 step 1 questions that I did right. And Kevin got 6 out of 10 of the NCLEX questions that he answered correctly. Overall, a great experience, I think. I think, uh... What are your thoughts on the NCLEX? 
It's interesting. It's a little bit different, but I think with every session you have to like uh, what's it called summarize the things you learned in the day. I will start by saying I didn't know about the insulin stuff. I think that's really interesting to say that you can like mix the things together. Yeah, I don't know if that was necessarily comprehensive of the types of questions there are. To take this exam with absolutely zero clinical knowledge, I think yeah. is gonna make it exponentially harder. Yeah, mad respect to you guys and all the exams that you guys take. All those questions were from Board Vitals. Hope you enjoyed this little segment. We both had a really good time doing it. I'm gonna leave a link down below so you can check out Board Vitals and you can use code Mickey Rye as always for 20% off. I love you guys so much. Don't forget that you're a 10 out of 10 and don't let anyone ever make you feel otherwise. And we will see you guys in the next one really, 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 really soon. Bye, we love you. You're also super pretty. <laughs> I could swear it's been 700 degrees in here since you came in. I could swear that this room has been running out of air and now it's.